Next on the list is what came out in the VL Commodore, the RB30, mate. It was well known as a fully sick engine. The distributor on this particular motor uses an optic triggering system together with an ignition module. This one uses an optic pickup inside the distributor here together with an ignition module mounted on the side which goes over to this ignition coil over the other side of the engine. So what's inside the optic pickup and how does it work? So this is the distributor out of the VL Commodore. Inside there is an optical sensor which is used as a crank angle sensor. Once the rotor button is pulled off there's a, a screw or a little bolt that needs to be taken off here. This cover plate can be taken off two screws. In here is the optical sensor and you might notice that there's a disc, a rotating disc. There are several slots in it. These ones here, one, two, three, four, five, six, obviously, indicate how many cylinders there are. And if we rotate it around, see this fellow here? You can see that it's a bigger slot, isn't it? That indicates cylinder number one. The little tiny slots here, which you must never touch, are at 360 degrees or 360 slots and that indicates every degree of rotation. So how does this little sensor work? To give you an idea of how it operates I'm going to use my phone and a piece of cardboard. So what now? The optical sensor has two LEDs on one side of the rotating disc. The rotating disc is kind of like this piece of cardboard that has holes or slots cut into it. The LEDs don't actually flash but as these slots go around and around, it gives the impression that they are flashing. I'll show you what I mean. As the LEDs shine and the slots come around, it gives the impression that it's flashing. Notice that? And therefore, on the other side of this rotating disc, something like this, and it's called a photodiode. So as this fellow sits over here, it gets the impression that a circuit is being turned off and on or the light coming into this little photodiode completes a circuit and therefore that information goes back to the ECU for processing. Here's what you might find inside an optic sensor. In the case of an optic sensor you would find the LEDs here, two LEDs for the optic sensor. Down here you would find the photo transistors that would receive that flashing signal. Then within the circuitry you have things like resistors, capacitors, high wattage resistors here and here. Uh, together with diodes, there's a Zener diode there, a normal diode there, and of course the main IC chip. You don't generally see this, it's covered by resin, it's actually quite hard to get to, but it gives you a little bit of insight of what's happening inside our sensor. Right, here's a schematic of the crank angle sensor that we're looking at, um, and as you can see we've got an earth on the left hand side, we have a power supply which is actually given by the EFI relay, that's important to remember, so it's 12 volts coming in, and the two signals that go out to the ECU uh, in pin 8 and pin 17. Not that that makes any difference to our little demonstration today because we ain't got no ECU attached. But I've got some wires attached and let's have a look at it using just an LED test light. As you can see I've got my little battery hooked up on the side here. Uh, this is the negative, this is the 12 volt input and these two guys are the outputs. And I've got my little LED hooked up down here, excuse all the wires going everywhere, it's probably a little confusing, but the wire that I'm hooked up to now are these single slots in the centre, those six slots that indicate how many cylinders there are. One thing to note is that I've got my LED test light hooked up, I guess you'd say backwards. So in other words, my little clip that would normally go to ground, I'm actually putting it on the positive side. Remember, the ignition side of things is being triggered on the negative side. So if all I do is rotate this shaft, you can see that this little LED will go off and on um, consistent with the slots that are in the rotating disc. So the next one we're going to go to is the 360 slots that are on the rotating disc. Let's have a look at what that one does. Once again we rotate the shaft and you can see it's flashing, little tiny flashes there. Might just turn that light off so you can see it a bit little clearer. Can you see it flashing off and on there? 360 flashes per single revolution. What we'll do now is have a look at our oscilloscope and see what the pattern looks like on channel one and channel two. Look guys, here's a classic example of why you don't just rely on a simple LED test light. We had a look before 
and we could see the little flashes of the LED which seemed to indicate that both sides of the phototransistors was working or the sensor was working okay. But when I put it up on the screen, have a look at what I found. I'll just rotate the shaft and we can see what sort of patterns we're going to end up on the screen. So channel 1 is my 360 slots. You can clearly see that that's working fine. But on the other trace, you can see that it's dead as a pork chop. And that's probably the reason this distributor is here at the college, simply because it has a faulty crank angle sensor. But hey, that's why you use an oscilloscope rather than just a simple test light. It can give you a false positive reading. So I'd say the reason that it seemed to give a flashing of the LED was the fact that I stopped and started the rotation of the shaft. Okay, so there's a clear indication that we have one of the photodiodes um, out or one of the LEDs out, and that is causing the problem. So if we just zoom in on the pattern there, we can have a close look and have a look at the actual waveform itself and see if it's in good shape. Now you can see it's a nice square wave pattern on off signal and even though it's rounded on the fronts there that's okay. But clearly we have an issue with our other side which is the six slots which indicate how many cylinders it is. Those six slots represent 120 degrees of a single rotation of that shaft and that is used for a crank angle sense or the crank angle as well as the piston position. Those 360 slots are designed for engine speed and used for ignition timing. Here's a schematic of our crank angle sensor and you can see there's two wires that head back to the ECU. They're the output ones from the sensor itself. What happens to that information when it goes to the ECU? It gets processed. In other words, information from other sensors is taken in by the ECU then processed and the best time for the ignition spark to take place is calculated internally and then it goes off to what's called our power transistor. This fella here on the side of the distributor is the power transistor. How does it work? The power transistor is exactly as the name suggests. It's actually a transistor. Remember when we did diodes, a diode is basically an electrical one-way valve. A transistor is like a combination of two diodes. They can be either facing one another or facing away from one another, depending if they are NPN or PNP. This little fella here is an NPN transistor. Let me explain. For an NPN transistor, the diodes face away from one another and there's a connection in the middle called the base. This is called the collector and this one over here is called the emitter. How do we test them? And this is an NPN transistor drawn as a schematic. As you can see, there's a base in the middle, a collector at one end and an emitter at the other. In the case of conventional current, flow is allowed to take place from the collector through the base once it's energised, through to the emitter and down to ground. This little bloke down here is our base. This fella here is the collector and the back frame of the transistor, which is this fella over here, is the actual emitter. How do we test it? Remember, it's an NPN transistor. So in other words, we can allow a negative signal to come through on either side of being fed by a positive trigger at the base. With our multimeter set in the diode range, we use our positive lead here on the base. Remember, NPN. And then we touch onto our collector. And as you can see, we've got 0.5 of a volt. If we go to the emitter, it should be the same, which it is. But remember, they're diodes, a one-way valve. Let's switch our multimeter lead and put the negative on the base now. There should be no continuity or there should be no voltage drop going across. In this case, that's correct. The collector is showing that the diode is OK. Let's have a look at the emitter, though. Ah, we've got a problem there, haven't we? It shouldn't be going both ways. So clearly this power transistor is faulty as well. Let me explain how this triggering mechanism is used to trigger the ignition coil. First of all, we have power coming from the ECU down to the crank angle sensor. Remember, we have that rotating disc that goes through the crank angle sensor that allows two signals to go back to the ECU. After processing all the data, taking into account the information from all the different sensors, the base of the power transistor is triggered, allowing for a ground path to come from the collector through to the emitter 
that ground path completes the primary circuit allowing for that high energy voltage to be produced in the secondary which heads off to the distributor and finally down to the spark plugs.